Hello, my name is Beatrice. I am the Senior Curator of Fashion and Decorative Arts here at the Museum of London and I'm super delighted to welcome you to another episode of London's Fashion Alphabet. And today we're looking at T and as you can already guess probably T stands for tailoring. When you think about tailoring and London the first thing that might spring to mind is Savile Row and we have quite a few outfits that were made on that street. The street itself only existed from the 1730s and there were quite a lot of tailors in adjacent streets and areas but only in 1846 did the first tailor actually settle in Savile Row and that tailor was Henry Poole. So the first object I want to look at was made by that Henry Poole company and it's from 1870, so not long after they settled in Savile Row. And as you can see, it's not a civilian suit, but it's part of a uniform. And this would have been a dress uniform for a deputy lieutenant for the county of Middlesex. And the army was very important for the development of tailoring anyway. Um, at times, as you can imagine, they would have required a lot of garments um, made by tailors and that also sort of led to advancements in, in, in tailoring. Another garment we have from Henry Poole is now a civilian, uni uh, civilian suit. So this would, as you can see, these are tails. Uh, so these are worn, still worn for white tie events. And this was made in 1919. Um, and we also have a waistcoat. And it came with a suit, but that was from a different tailor. So this particular owner sort of mixed and matched his, his um, suit parts. The next suit I want to show you is from Anderson and Shepard. So in some respects, they sort of rel were relatively recent addition to Savile Row. Uh, they only settled there, Pear Anderson only settled there in 1906, although he had worked with another tailor earlier. And I love this suit. Um, this is a, a Glen plate or Glen Urquhart check, also sometimes called a Prince of Wales check. And oftentimes people say it is something to do with Edward VIII's Prince of Wales, Duke of Windsor, but it's actually to do with Edward VII um, when he was Prince of Wales. He liked that sort of check. And this was actually ordered by a Greek man who lived in Switzerland. So that shows how still in the past and still people come from far and wide to have a look at, um, to have their suits made at Savile Row. This is one of my favorite suits in the collection for many, many reasons. Um, one of them is it's got 13 pockets, so a lot of pockets in the jacket, in the waistcoat and in the trousers. The other reason is that it is very nicely made. You can see how the, the pattern of the check has been matched up here. This was actually not made by Savile Row. So tailors would have been actually all over London particularly also in the city where, of course, they would have found a lot of clients. So this is by a company called Couch and Hoskin, which were in Cullum Street, not, not that far from here. Um, and while it was probably made for someone working in the city, it was made, I'm sure, for, for actually wearing in the country. So these are actually plus fours. So these are not trousers, but these are sort of a type of knick knickerbocker, you might say. And you can already see some more of the pockets. And also you can see the buttons that are on the waistband outside for the braces. Now, if we go back to Savile Row, what you get in the 1960s is what was called a peacock revolution. So there were a lot of new tailors coming to Savile Row, all the streets around it, and they were making things out of new materials and new shapes for different kind of people. And I want to show you a few of those that we have in the collection. So this suit was made by a tailor called Blades and that was set up by uh, Rupert Lysett Green at the age of 22. He was very well connected. He set it up with a tailor and an accountant. And this particular suit was worn by the interior designer David Mlinaric. And he said he wore it normally with um, a light blue shirt or sometimes very 60s, actually 70s, this was made in 77, with a polo shirt and with Chelsea boots. Another company known from that period is Tommy Nutter. 
And um, this is a suit which um, is described on a database as string colored, which is a lovely way of describing the color. And you can see it is very 70s with, with its very, very wide lapels. The trouser um, legs are also quite flare. They have turn ups. So in the 70s, a lot of the inspiration for suits came from the late 30s and 40s. So double breasted, wide lapels. Um, quite wide trousers, um, take some in inspiration from there. And then the last suit I want to show you from this period is from Mr. Fish. Um, and this suit has a really great story. It was bought for uh, the first night of the musical Hair in 1968. And it might not look that special um, to us now, but I think just having corduroy is w would have been not totally unusual, but that is probably the thing that's sort of slightly different about it. I want to end with two tailors who set up relatively recently. So one of them um, made this suit. So this is a suit by Oswald Boateng. Um, he was born in London to Ghanaian parents and he set up in 1995 near Savile Row and then in the early 2000s he moved to Savile Row. And I believe he now occupies the biggest premises on Savile Row and he's known for the vibrant colours. So this suit also comes with a shirt and then we have the trousers so this is from 2004-5. This is a suit from an even more recent um, addition to Savile Row. Um, this was made by Richard Anderson in 2010. He set up his place in 2001 on Savile Row and this was made for Sebastian Horsley who was a well-known um, Soho dandy. So the last suit I want to show you is another favorite and it's not unlike what I've shown you before which would have been bespoke suits most of them so they would have been made specifically to the specifications of the person who bespoke them who ordered them um, what I'm going to show you now is more like a made to measure suit so it also you have some sort of leeway in what you want what you can um, specify but it's made to an already existing pattern so this one um, was made by a company called Burton's and that was, it's not a London company, it was set up in Chesterfield in Derbyshire, um, but it had a lot of um, branches in London. So this was actually commissioned in a Burton's branch in Lambeth in 1975. And this was actually ordered by a 15 year old who had saved up his job, um, his money from a Saturday job in a bakery for a year to afford this suit. And he was inspired by a city gent he saw in St. James's Gardens um, on a school outing, who seemed to have been quite an unusual city gent because apparently he wore high platform boots with his pinstripe suit. He also had an umbrella, um, as you would expect from a city gent. I don't know what he was doing in the West End. Um, so the 15-year-old went to Burton's. Annoyingly, his father was coming along, which he wasn't very happy about. And his father didn't like this, these ideas that he had about the suit. So, for instance, he would have liked to have had turn-ups, but his father said, no way. Um, but he, he did manage to get away with some of the things he wanted. Like, this is quite unusual, unusual to have this very wide waistband. And again, the trousers are slightly flared, as you would expect from 1975. Um, and what I love about it is, well, A, it's, you know, that, that there's so much thought has gone into it. But also um, what Stephen, who, who's the person who bought it, what he said when he wore it. He said, I felt the sharpest bloke on the street when I first wore the suit. It felt as though I was wearing something that was really mine in every way for the first time. I very much hope you enjoyed this snapshot of the history of London tailoring focusing on menswear this time and please stay tuned and and watch out for our next letter which will be you